Hello, I'm David Sturgill, a member of the 2014 ICPC World Finals Analyst Team, and I'd like to talk about problem A, baggage. This is a problem that was a challenge for teams uh, to solve during the contest, but once you figure it out, the implementation is not that tricky. The idea is that you've got baggage bins for two flights, flight A and flight B, and you've got N bins for each flight, but they're all shuffled together. So you've got a bin for B, followed by a bin for A, then a bin for B, and your job is to sort them so that all the A bins are on the left and all the B bins are on the right, so the planes can leave, each carrying their own luggage. Now, to sort these, you've got a few things you can work with. You've got, uh, if you've got N uh, bins for A and N bins for B, you've got two N more spare spaces on the left, where you can sort of use as um, extra space as you rearrange the bins. But to rearrange the bins, you have to move them two at a time. You've got a machine that'll pick up two adjacent bins, put them in some empty spaces, and then you can repeat this as many times as you want until you have them sorted. To get them sorted, you need all the A bins on the left, all the B bins on the right, all consecutive, but they can be anywhere in the space, so they can end up uh, occupying some of those initially spare spaces. Now, to solve this, we can look at a small case, like if we say, what if there are four of each type of bins? And we can figure out a sequence of moves that'll rearrange them, and I've illustrated that here. Uh, we end up getting all the A bins on the left, all the B ones on the right. If we look at what happens during the sequence of moves, uh, this is sort of the smallest case for which this particular trick works. Uh, first of all, we notice that we can sort them, and as they sort, they move two spaces to the left. So sort of a side effect of this sequence of operations is to slide them down a little bit, and we notice it took to sort um, four of each type of bin took exactly four moves. This is something we can apply recursively if we can do th two things. If we can figure out uh, how to reduce a larger problem to a smaller one, <clears throat> and if we can figure out how to solve some small base cases for this. The reduction is probably the trickiest part. I've tried to illustrate that here. Um, we can take an arbitrary sequence of bins and we can reduce it to a problem of sorting a sequence eight bins smaller. Uh, so we'll do, we'll do an operation that will sort four outer bins on the left and the right, and we'll get them into the right order, and then we'll recursively apply that operation on uh, the bins in the middle until it becomes a one of our few base cases. So I've illustrated here what we can do to sort of get this started. We can move uh, some bins from the right over to the left, and then we can free up some space on the right. So we haven't completely sorted the outer bins, but we've made some progress on it, and if you look at the space in the middle, We've given two spaces worth of scratch space sort of to the left of that sequence of unsorted bins. So if we can recursively sort those using uh, the same procedure, or if it's a small enough sequence, just sorting it uh, directly, uh, then we, we end up sliding it to the right, but we get it in sorted order. And then we can finish our sequence of moves necessary to sort the outer bins. And I've illustrated that here. So we did two operations before on the outer bins, uh, and just two more operations. We'll get those guys into sorted order also. And if you look at the whole sequence, it's not only sorted now, but it also slid two spaces to the, to the left. So this is an operation that we can apply to arbitrarily large sequences of bins. This problem is interesting because you're asked to give a minimal sequence of operations that will get the bins sorted, but you only have to solve the problem for fairly small sequences. So between uh, n equals 3 all the way up to n equals 100. This is a problem that the teams could solve uh, offline and they could build that into their solution, or once they figure out this trick, this is something that would be very easy just to build into their solution before they submit it.